Ah, toothpicks. The eighth wonder of the known world. Used for prodding your friends, used for getting that bit of food out that's been annoying you all day, and used for painting miniatures. Wait, what? Oh, hello friends. Hope you're well. So yes, I was sitting here just thinking about painting minis, you know, and then I thought, why not try and paint a mini, but in the very tedious and pointlessly difficult way. So today, I will paint up this little orky boy using nothing but toothpicks. And paint, obviously. Now, the toothpick is an extremely versatile painting utensil. It has a pointy bit, and that's about it. For this challenge, however, I will use them in any ways I can. I might use the pointy bit for some highlighting, I might kind of cut it down like this and do some stippling, or maybe I'll join two together and chop them down for some base coats in. I honestly have no idea at this point, but we're going to see what happens. So let's do it. My first issue is actually putting the paint onto my wet palette. You can see the struggle I'm having here already. I thought about just using a brush for this as I'm not technically painting here, but I'm committed to this now, so it's all toothpicks from here on out, baby. For my first bit of painting, I cut the toothpick down to give it a bit of a flatter edge and then thin it down to hopefully make it more flexible and malleable for all those little creases and crevices. And spoiler alert, I actually ended up using this for the majority of the painting as it ended up being a primo painting utensil. And I'll be doing a fairly traditional orc paint scheme for this boy, so I start with some wack <laughs> flesh. After the first coat, it's actually not looking as horribly scratchy as I thought, but it will definitely need a second, if not a third coat. But this is giving me a burst of motivation as I wasn't sure if toothpick painting was actually feasible. Now I've seen the light and I am reaching for it. So yeah, after whacking on that flesh time, I'm riding high on a wave of pure ecstasy and I'm getting started on the trousers here too. I'm slapping on this Tuscor fur brown at an alarming speed, like the Concorde itself is manifesting my fingers. That is, until I have to paint these hard to reach spots on the inner thighs. If I were using a brush, I would just shove it in there, the bristles spreading like the majestic plumage of a peacock in heat, simultaneously saturating the air with rich colour and ruining the paintbrush forever. But alas, I have no such tool, only the humble toothpick. So instead, I scratch away at the area with the point of my toothpick until it's suitably covered. And then I decide I don't really like that colour, so I do it all over again with some darker dryad bark, peacocks and plumage, concords in my fingers, yada yada yada, and boom! It's still not looking quite right for some reason though because I'd forgotten to attach the blast shield for the rocket launcher. So I quickly prime that and add it on before anyone notices. Next, I'm using my trusty Abaddon Black to paint on any bits which will be metallic or just black later on. And by this point, I had a pretty major scientific breakthrough. I realised the paint worked best from the toothpick. If it was a fair bit wetter than now, I'd normally use with a brush. This allowed it to flow from the toothpick a bit easier and not be so scratchy looking. Groundbreaking stuff right there. Call a news press. The rocket launcher was by far the most frustrating thing to paint on this mini. There were so many little edges and nodules and crevices which were hard to get into using my modified toothpick but I persevered and only pulled out 17,000 hairs in the process. And also, the good thing about the rocket launcher is I get to paint this twice, as I'll be adding metallics later, so that's something to look forward to. I was also starting to get a bit messy at this point in my haste to get the black finished, getting the black paint in places where it shouldn't be. I had to remind myself to take a deep breath and enjoy the process, as it's not every day we get to infuriate ourselves by painting small objects with an awkward and frustratingly unsuitable painting tool. Next up, I'm using some Skaven Blight Dinge for his t-shirt vest thing here. This also had a bunch of hard to reach places, which were made more difficult by the inflexibility of the toothpick. The little sleeves poking out on the sides were especially tricky to paint without getting everywhere else also. There wasn't much actual surface area to paint for this, but it was really annoying to paint and I had to give it a few coats because they were going on so scratchy. But we got there in the end. For the backpack, I first scratch on some black paint to the claw thing, whatever this is, on the bottom here, as this would probably be getting a bit of metallic later on. And viewer, you will not be surprised to learn that this backpack also had a lot of hard to reach and tricksy little annoying spots which were not conducive to the receiving of paint from a little wooden rod. In my efforts to get it covered, I ended up with Mournfang Brown all over the place, but I just didn't care by now. I'd come to the conclusion that I'd be left with a ton of cleanup work, so I embraced that and just continued slapping on the paint like there was no tomorrow. 
and I spotted this little stud thing on the strap of the backpack, so I slap on a little bit of black on that for metallic metallicizing, metallicizing, I don't know, uh, for putting metallics on later, and also use a little black around the belt. Then I saw this plate armor piece on the chest here, which is covered up by the rocket launcher, but I'll add, you guessed it, some black paint to that, just so it's darkened down to not draw any attention from the unfinished primer later on. After I've butchered those sections, I move on to the rockets, for which I'll be using some Ultham Grey and a bit of Wazdaka Red. I thought these would actually be really fun to paint, but they sucked so much. I was getting really tired of toothpick painting by this point, so I tried to slap it on quickly and ended up putting it on way too thickly. I tried to thin it back down a bit on the model by adding a little drop of water and trying to wick away some of the excess paint before it dries, and that kind of worked, but not really. I had some pretty chunky textured rockets here by the time I finished messing about with them, which was not ideal. And painting these made me want to quit this all together. I was thinking to myself, why am I bothering with this? I'm painting a mini using a toothpick, what is the point? It's just going to end up looking awful, but I remembered I'm doing this for science. I'm doing this so you don't have to. This one goes out to everyone with an ample supply of toothpicks, but no paintbrushes. I feel you, my brothers, and I am here for you. But anyway... After painting this little top bit here in the rocket colour, I thought it was probably part of the bag holding it in, so I painted that in Mornfang Brown instead, and we're done with that colour for now. I'd planned to paint these tassels all different colours, but by the time I reached them I was flagging, so I chose to go with Crystal Blue for all of them instead, to reduce expenditure of the last few dregs of brain power I had left. And this was a good choice, keeping them to one colour turned them into a mental aid station on this ultra marathon of painting, they were really easy, so I soaked up the satisfaction which came from applying these and re-energised myself for the upcoming battle of toothpick painting ahead. For the cables on the rocket launcher, I gave one a little blast of Mephiston Red and the other some Uriel Yellow. I don't know why I used Mephiston Red here instead of the Wazdaka Red I was already using, but it just felt right. Sometimes you just gotta follow your gut. My makeshift painting tool was still going strong at this point also. I had used the pointy bit of a toothpick a couple of times for hard to reach spots, but this trimmed down toothpick had been the workhorse of this entire operation. However, it was time to introduce a new element of my toothpick arsenal. I'd been preparing the secret weapon in the deepest, moistest pits of my mouth for the last 10 minutes slowly being pulverized by my teeth until a fibrous object resembling the most crude of paintbrushes emerged. It is majestic. I knew I had to make the most of this tool before its bristles all stiffened and fell out as my saliva dried and reduced its malleable properties to dust. So I start whipping this around the metallic sections using lead belcher and this is the tool I needed all along the ancient alien technology, the light shining in the darkness, the master wand, the Excalibur of all my toothpick painting requirements. You see it here in action. The lead belcher is being whipped around in a beautiful frenzy, like the saliva-infused bristles were born with this one purpose in mind. The rocket launcher gets some, the backpack gets some, then these other small details get a touch-up with a now comparatively inferior plain toothpick, but needs must. Once that's done, I quickly scratch on these spanners and the little spark down here with a smidge of Ulthu and Grey, and then I go around the whole mini using our previous colours and the workhorse toothpick to neaten up the existing colours as best I can. I have to fight my palette a bit here also, as my toothpicks have been wearing holes through the paper on top and dragging little bits of debris up with them. This was another issue with the toothpick painting paradigm, but I overcame this by just not giving a sh** and ignoring it. Almost forgot to paint on the little teeth here as well, actually. Ooh, there we go, a few little scratches of paint, and they're looking okay for now. So, all of our base coats are now applied, and I'm going for a very simple paint job for this orky boy, so it's time to apply some washes. I'll be using the holy trinity of washes today, being Nuln Oil, Aphonian Camo Shade, and my last few drops of Agarac Surf Shade. And I'll be applying them using another of my highly specialised, chewed up, fibrous toothpicks, for maximum wash sloshage, wash slosh, wash sloshage, wash sloshage. So yeah, very simple. The flesh gets a blast of Athonian camo shade, the tassels and any metallic bits get some non oil, and all the remaining bits get a coat of Agrax Surf Shade. And I wasn't sure whether to apply Agrax Surf Shade all over the rockets, as it might muddy up the grey a bit, 
but I did it anyway, and it did. It did muddy them up. My specialised wash toothpick was suffering a calamitous breakdown in structural integrity by the time I finished these washes, so I dispose of that with utmost care and move on to the final steps. With the final steps being highlights. I wanted to pay a bit of special attention to the flesh and then just give a quick touch up to all the other bits. For the flesh, our workhorse toothpick is back out and I apply an initial highlight with some Lauren Forest. I found the best way to get this on with my toothpick was to apply it in a kind of stippling motion and then I mix in a bit of moot green, tearing up more of my palette in the process and add another lighter highlight to the flesh. Next, I use the thin scratchy bit of my toothpick to add some Fenrisian grey highlights to the vest and also some little scratchy bits and edge highlights on the helmet and the electrical box at the bottom of the rocket launcher. Some Steel Legion Drab is used to add some quick highlights to the backpack and some Gore 4 Brown for the same on the trousers. Baharoff Blue goes on for the tassels and Evil Sun Scarlet and Flash Gits Yellow for the wires. I was absolutely speeding through these steps as I just wanted to get this finished by this stage since painting with toothpicks is surprisingly not that enjoyable as you can probably tell from the lack of interesting voiceover at this point in the video. I also use some Evil Sun Scarlet and the Ulfthorn Grey to try and tidy up the rockets as much as I can, though that is not very much all things considered, and they end up looking like weird little textured hot dogs or something like that, I don't know, whatever you want. For my final touches, I use some Screaming Skull to bring back a bit of life into his protruding teeth, and then use some more of our Evil Sun Scarlet, all through and Grey, and Abaddon Black to do a little rough and ready cyborg eye on the helmet module. I then whip out one more last minute surprise by chopping a toothpick into a sophisticated stippling device and try to paint on a couple of skulls onto either side of the main rocket. This ends up looking just as rough as the rest of the rocket, which is quite fitting I suppose, but in hindsight, I might as well have just not bothered wasting my time painting on these awful little homogenous blobs. To finish off the mini completely, I quickly base them using some homemade mud mixture, a couple of tufts for good luck, and then a rim job of steel leads and drab. And finito. Let's now take a look at the results of my torture. Yeah, I don't know. It looks super rough. <laughs> I mean, some parts actually look okay, like the skin, and that's probably about it, to be honest. But I have to remember, I painted this using toothpicks, so the standard of comparison should arguably be a lot lower. So when we bear in mind I painted this using stiff wooden sticks instead of nice, soft, lovely paintbrushes, it looks alright. It comes together as a mini, and you can kind of see what I was going for. From a tabletop distance, at least, the flesh looks reasonable, and other parts like the tassels look okay too. Just don't get too close to any of it, because then it's pretty clear how awful it looks. And don't even get me started on this rocket and the weird potato skull thing I've painted on it. The paint on this is so thick that I could scratch an inch deep into it and still be left with 15 layers worth of paint. So yeah, turns out toothpicks are pretty hard to paint with, which will come as a surprise to no one. And if you're wondering why I made this video, well... Me too. It was a fun, albeit frustrating challenge though, <laughs> it still is better than half the stuff I normally paint, so yeah. If this was Mythbusters and the myth was you can paint a whole mini using toothpicks only, I'd probably say myth plausible. I think with more practice I could paint a decent looking mini actually, but I don't want to practice more with toothpicks so that's not going to happen. There must be other objects out there I could use to paint a decent looking mini though. Hmm. Anyway. Thanks for watching, if you made it through this, and I'll see you soon with more videos.